God has created us on this earth to cultivate the earth. So every other thing we are seeing that is coming to being have first existed in the spiritual. So Wherever you are tuning into this channel, welcome to week 25. I am grateful and I appreciate God for ordering your steps to come across this video. I want to especially thank those that have taken the first step to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification button so that anytime we upload video every Monday and some other special programs, you are notified and you also make it as a duty to you know join us and glean with us in this vineyard of God, this commission that the Lord has given unto us, one verse. I thank everyone that has been part of this vision. You that is sending me email, sending me um messages, you know, sharing your testimony with me. God bless you. God bless you. God is using you to encourage us here in one verse and also encourage believers that have you know, lost hope that Christ has made a promise that he will never go back on his promise. So I thank you, I thank you, and also remember our challenge to at least have 40 verses of the scripture. It is very rare in this, our Christianity, very, very rare that you can call up somebody that said he has been in the Christendom for 30 years, 15 years, 20 years, to stand and just recite word for word, 40 verses. And that is why the Lord has laid this burden on my heart that we should embark on this vision. And I know God that is faithful will grant you the wisdom and grant you the grace to be able to have as much verses in your spirit than ever before. So thank you and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Father, we thank you, we exhort you, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. Take all the adoration for what that you have done and for things that you are yet to do. Today we come again, Father, to talk about this verse through your inspiration because we believe that there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of God given him understanding. Thank you, Holy Spirit, the listeners, as many that will come across this video, Lord God, King of Glory, that which you are proposed to do with this world, Lord God, King of Glory, let it come alive in their life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I volunteer myself as a vessel that you speak through me and address issues of life. In the life of my brethren, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You see, you know, some people have been used to how we do it. But let me tell you something. Things about God. If you allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the greatest strategist. He has so many ways, millions of ways of doing the same thing and having results. And of course, if it is God that do it, it will be marvelous in our eyes. Today we'll be talking about a verse that you are familiar with. We like doing the familiar things. Psalms chapter 138 verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of thine own end. We are the works of God's end. And the psalmist is saying that he will not forsake us. Remember, in the scripture, to our new subscribers and people that today, this is the first video you are watching, we have offered a disclaimer that because this commission is one verse, we will only stick to one verse. But we will use the content of other verses to support our points. That simply said, we will not be quoting other scriptures except Psalms chapter 138 verse 8 for this week. The psalmist is saying, the Lord 
will perfect that which concerns me. Because I am the handiwork of God's hand. Because I am the apple of God's eye. He is going to perfect. Oh my Lord. I feel like I feel like jumping. I feel like I feel like singing. I feel like you know making somebody understand. I feel like bringing it more alive to you. See, if you look back your life, you will know that you are a time bomb. A time bomb in the sense that nobody ever knew what God is about to do with your life. Nobody ever can, can see all that God is about to unfold in your life. And for the fact that he has sustained you to this point, the service is saying that he is going to perfect that which concerned you. That which concerned me. It should be a joy to wake up in the morning. Oh, my God, my Lord, we perfect that which concerned me. Is, that, is, it, is it like a sickness? That, okay, the doctor has given, you know, his own prescription. He has diagnosed everything. And he's saying, oh, the way this thing is going, it's only, only, in fact, some people will not even tell you it's only God. He said, the way this thing is going, if you get beyond like this, you are going to be brain dead. You are going to be this. You are going to be that. But God is going to perfect that which concerns you. That which concerns you. Are you at the crossroad? Are you at the point that in the eyes of men or even in your own thinking, you are already prophesying to yourself that shame is pending? No, my God is going to perfect that which concerns me. He's going to perfect that which concerns you. He's going to perfect that which concerns us. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me try to, you know, this is not like hyping. No, I'm not trying to hype you. I'm not trying to, you know, you know, motivate you. This is not motivational speaking. This is professing the word of God. You remember in a verse, Jesus was telling the disciples, they are wondering, how is it possible that even the corn can hear you? Even the fig tree can hear you? Even the waters can hear you? The wind can obey you? All these things can hear you. Jesus said, I tell you this. If you can say unto this mountain, I like Pastor Chris in this ministry. You know, Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Oh my God, I like that. Don't stop talking your miracle out. Do you know that those things, most of the mountains visible in your life right now, that you're seeing, check back your life. Some of them, you use your mouth to create it. Everything in this world was created by simple word of God. Let there be light, and there was light. And scientists have been taking hundreds, thousands of years to discover what and what put together become light. It was spoken, it was out of the spoken word. Let there be light. Now somebody might misquote me to say, okay, why can't you say, let there be car? No. No. God has created us on this earth to cultivate the earth. So every other thing we are seeing that is coming to being have first existed in the spiritual. So man was meant to cultivate just as you will go and plant a seed and a seed of corn and you will see corn will grow up. Just as you will go and plant a seed and the tree will grow up and fruits will come up. So we are expected to bring those things into life, to bring those things into visible beings. Because we have the spiritual resident in us, we have the physical resident in us, we have also the soul. So we are meant to bring those things that have existed in the spirit into the physical. Because we are created in tripartite nation. God is about to perfect that which concerns you. It's not only about your sickness. Oh, do I forget to address your sickness? No, because that sickness has not killed you till you are hearing the sound of my voice. My God is going to perfect that which concerns you. Oh, that sickness cannot kill you. 
and he will never, he will not be able, it will not be able to kill you. I address it right now that my God is going to perfect that which concerns you. How can I bask in this promise? How can I bask in this promise that God is going to perfect all that concerns me? All that concerns me, that which concerns me. How can I live out this promise? The writer of Hebrew, I'm not going to mention the verse, told us. He said, let us therefore now come boldly. Now, now that you are beginning to doubt, now that you are beginning to figure out how to bask in this thing. He said, let us therefore now come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In this time that you are thinking all the world is crumbling down on you. See, in another scripture he said, He that has begun a good work. Are you finding yourself in a strange land? Oh, you just relocated to a new location. Oh, you just, you just, you just found a new job. Oh, you just finished that course. And this is your first job. And everybody is looking forward to see what you can produce. My God that has given you that job is ready to perfect all that concerns you. That which concerns you, he is able to do it. You see, another version of the scripture says, he is going to accomplish that which pertains you. He is going to accomplish. So, do you see when, when Paul the Apostle was addressing the people and he told him that we are the workmanship through Christ Jesus. You see? So that simply tells you that you are a time bomb moving in motion. No one can know what God is about to do with your life. You thought you have seen miracle. You thought you have seen a level of acceleration in your life. No. But the path of the just is as the shining light, shining brighter and brighter until the perfect day. So, so when the Bible says the Lord will perfect that which consigned me, so I am a work in progress. That you see me today and you want to categorize me based on where I'm living, based on what I put on, based on what I'm earning, you are wrong. Why? The path of the righteous man is like a shining light. Remember what the Lord said. Remember the scripture. Because Jesus said, if ye can say unto this mountain, oh my God, can you wake up this morning and say, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. That which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. He does not run out of mercy. But eventually you are not qualified for that perfection. No, he does not run out of mercy. He says he will perfect that which concerns you. See, I'm saying it over and over again because we are coming into the month of July. This is the month of July, the seventh month. Seven is a number spiritually that signifies perfection. This month, the Lord will help us to come with that scriptures, those scriptures, those, those promises that will remind us that we have stepped into perfection. Parabencho, you have been trying and failing. Parabencho, that business is not answering you. Do you know that you can call it forth? You can call it forth because you have been given authority. A scripture says, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bind in heaven. Do you also know that whatever you lose will be loose in heaven? So I come to you today to establish the fact that He that has created you will not forsake the works of His hand. He will not forsake the work of His hand. You are created in God's image. God will not forsake you. Remember, that which is trying to put you down does not have the permission from God. Because remember, the thought God thinks towards you 
is not of evil, but it's of peace to give you an expected end. The plans for God for you is to give you a hope and a future. So it will surely perfect that which concerns you. Oh, brethren, be encouraged in the Lord. Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. And that is why this verse is coming to you. That God is going to accomplish that which concerns you. That which pertains to you. That your child that is running like a prodigal son, the Lord is going to perfect it. And he will come back home and say, Daddy, I am sorry. Mommy, I am sorry. That business that is looking as if there are, there are principalities and powers that are dictating what should be your faith. No, my God that give you the idea to start that business will perfect that which concerns you. Oh, is it not a business for you? It will give you idea that will supersede that which you have seen. And let me encourage you today that he has promised not to forsake us. And so we can boldly say the Lord is our helper. Trust God today. Paraventure, you are not born again. I submit to you. You will keep struggling to figure out. Why not let it out for God? Remember, there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty give him understanding. So today, will you submit unto God and say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. And beginning from today, I want to live according to your dictates. Let the Lord decide for me beginning from today. Because it is not given unto a man to order his steps. I surrender fully unto you. If you make that prayer, that simple prayer with me, can we bow our heads in prayer? Father, I thank you. Because I know it's not in the multitude of words I will speak. But Lord, these words are spirit and they are life. And I thank you because this is coming to someone that is at the edge of that crossroad. And Lord God, King of glory, you will work together all things for good for those that love you and those that are called according to your purpose. Thank you, Abba Father, for this is the heritage of the believer that when we ask according to your will, it is done already. My brethren, I pray that this word will rejuvenize that lion spirit in them to walk boldly knowing that their Lord will perfect that which concerns them. I believe and I trust that you will do more than I have asked in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, brethren. Remember, the Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Until I come your way again, I remain your brother, Andrew Feinboy. Shalom.